the Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats, went to Capernaum, looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, The work of God. This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. What is our hope for our children or our grandchildren? More than anything, what do you wish for them? You had that set in your head? Now I'd be willing to bet that while we would not wish for them to live in abject poverty, our hope is more for the kind of people that they will become rather than the amount of wealth or fame or power that they might amass for themselves. We hope that they would have a strong sense of self, would be happy with who they are, but also that they would have a modest opinion of themselves, that they would be strong, not in a muscle you around kind of way, but a gentle strength that is immovable when it has to be, that they be patient with others, but also willing to speak the truth clearly and compassionately. We hope that they would take care of those who are less fortunate than they are, who are weaker than themselves, that they would be honest, trustworthy, that they would love and be well-loved. We hope that there would be joy and abundance and a strong foundation for times of sorrow. Sure, money, a nice house, being well thought of, uh, all these things would be nice to see, but my guess is for many of us, what our children become is more important than what they have. I'm most proud of my stepkids. When they tell me stories about how they have handled something that has come up in their lives, and I begin to see the people that they are growing into, the ones that I saw glimpses of years ago. And it's this same desire that the author of Ephesians is expressing today. The language of growth, maturity, building up is frequent in what is a really short passage. And here it's applied to the church as a whole, but it does extend down into the individuals who make up the church. The desire expressed is that the church would grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. And I think the expression here is a whole heck of a lot like when we talk about a puppy growing into his feet. You ever hear that expression, right? Because sometimes puppy feet are so doggone big, they're bigger than the body. But eventually the body grows up until the, the paws and the body are proportioned just right, yeah? I think that's what the author of Ephesians is talking about here. That the body of the church, which is us, needs to grow and mature until it fits with the head, which is Christ. So, like any parent... The desire is not that we would have many members or have power and prestige on earth, be able to snap our fingers and government bends over backwards for us. I think the hope is that we would be like Christ. 
humble, strong, patient. That we would be an extension of Jesus' ministry here on earth. That we would feed the hungry, heal the sick, offer comfort to the grieving, welcome the outcast. That we would live our faith in front of others. That we would be known for our self-sacrificial love for all. That we would grow and mature into what Christ already is. And this growth into the fullness of the body of Christ is supported by Christ who is the head of the church and does so through the Holy Spirit which promotes this growth. Now this text from Ephesians expresses clearly what my hope for our three-year capital campaign, Giving to Grow, which started about this time last year. Now our immediate goal for the campaign is to grow the amount of money that we receive year over year from individuals who already give and growth in the numbers of people who are contributing financially to the mission and ministry of St. John. It's also hoped and is a laudable goal that we would grow in the number of members that we have and the depth of involvement of all members. Now both these things are important, but they aren't what get me most excited about this campaign. What gets me excited about this three-year campaign is the focus each year in the way in which we will grow. Growing in faith toward God. Growing in love towards one another. Growing in generosity to all. Now for many of us who are concrete thinkers, we prefer to think of growth in terms of things that we can quantify, right? Numbers of people who are members, how much money we take in, how many bushels per acre annual profits? How many cucumbers do I have to try and sneak on my neighbor's porch because I have way too many? How tall does my kid have to get before I have to start calling him sir? This is growth that we can literally really grasp hold of. But this other growth is what excites me more. And it's really what the writer of Ephesians is talking about in our reading today. It's a less concrete kind of maturing, more of an abstract idea. And while we talk about growth and maturing as individuals, we even more so speak of our growth and maturing as an assembly. The unity that is St. John Lutheran in Ely, the body of Christ in this place. And this maturing is reflected in the way in which we work together, that we use the gifts God has given us. Ephesians talks about a variety of gifts, doesn't it? Some are apostles and teachers, others evangelists and prophets. Paul writes in Corinthians about the church being a body. And no one is the entirety of the body, right? Some of us are eyes, some of us are ears, some that little thing that hangs down the back of your throat. But each of those things is necessary for the functioning of the body for the functioning of the whole, because eyes can't hear, ears can't see. So each and every one of us, with our unique gifts and abilities, is necessary for the healthy functioning of the church that is St. John. So to do the ministry of Christ in Ely, we need folks who are gifted and willing to help raise our children in the faith. A promise that we all make, by the way, at their baptism. But folks who do this, by being Sunday school teachers, confirmation mentors, we need folks willing to do the out-of-sight work of property maintenance and repair, of setting up coffee and treats that we enjoy on Sunday, and even more importantly, doing the dishes after. We need folks who are willing to share their gift of music with us. We need folks willing to usher to mash the button back there on the PowerPoint. We need folks who are willing to organize, to lead, to follow. And so all of us together make our ministry here a success. So what about growing in faith toward God, love to one another, generosity to all? Well, I've said from the beginning, brothers and sisters, if we are open to the power of the Holy Spirit to be at work, And if we are diligent in growing in our faith toward God through spending more time reading Scripture, 
in conversation with God in prayer, coming together in worship to hear that word proclaimed and sung, growing in love towards one another as we learn more about this self-sacrificial God, love God has for us and calls us to share with others as we grow in generosity to all people and our willingness to share out of our abundance with others who do not have as much as we do. Through the church, certainly, but also through charities and through the generosity of our own lives. As we do those things, as we mature and grow into those things as a community, we will grow. Both in concrete ways, numbers of members, Uh, the number of folks who are uh, contributing of their time, energy, and effort to this place, the ministry being done, but also we will grow in those harder to quantify things, our depth of faith, the quality of our outreach, the way in which we love one another. And as we do this, brothers and sisters, we will lead a life worthy of the calling to which we have been called calling that came to us when we first felt the waters caress our forehead and the Holy Spirit come to us at our baptism. Yeah, I think we feel that, experience that as children. A calling fed by the word that we hear read and proclaimed from this pulpit. A calling fueled by the feast of love that is the meal. The body and blood of Jesus himself that we receive at this table. A calling that is gift to us, certainly, but also one that empowered by the Holy Spirit, fed through the word we live into, we grow into, we mature into. And we do this not for ourselves, but for the glory of God and God's church. But mostly we do this for the sake of the world. Amen.